Good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to St Jude's morning worship this morning. Um, we're going to start with a prayer. The night has passed and the day lays open to us all. Let us rejoice together in the gift of this new day so that we may know the light of your presence, O God. Lord, set our hearts on fire today with love for you. Amen. It's lovely to have so many of us you with us this morning on this lovely Tuesday morning. Um, the first reading this morning is from Psalms. Um, it's Psalm 5 verse 3. That's Psalm 5 verse 3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. What a lovely reading to be able to lay our requests before God and to be able to hear his voice as we meet together this morning. So let's just come now to a time of confession. Um, the response is, have mercy on us. And let's just pause for a minute. Let's, a time of quiet. Just think about the things we've done that have hurt others. By the things we've said and the things we've done. Lord, for the times we have said things that have upset others, have mercy on us. For the times our action have caused hurt and upset to others. Lord, have mercy on us. For the times we have had so many opportunities to show your love to others, and yet we haven't shown it, or we haven't used those opportunities to say the right things for you. Lord, have mercy on us. For the times we have abused or not cared for your creation, for the times we have not been active in the protection of your world, Lord, have mercy on us. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and God's Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. I'm going to read a very short reading. Um, I've got a book called Hope and it's got a reading in for each day and the reading for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made imperfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And let's just think for a few minutes about that reading where God says that my grace is sufficient for you. It's a pair of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's perhaps the greatest, most moving prayer ever uttered. For in it our Lord asks that the cup of the crucifixion which was about to be thrust upon him might be taken away. But then in the next breath he said, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. What a prayer, what strength, what power. Not as I will, but as you will. And when the Apostle Paul asked God to remove his thorn in the flesh, God did not remove it, saying, Instead, my grace is sufficient for you. 
Rather than complain and become angry at God, Paul joyfully submitted to God's will. He discovered that God's grace truly was sufficient, even in the midst of pain. Christ's desire is to be with us on whatever crisis we find ourselves in. Call upon his name. See if he will not do as he promises. He may not make your problems go away, but he will give you the power to deal with them and to overcome them with his grace. What problems do we all face at the moment? We never thought, did we, we'd be in lockdown like this. We never saw this coming. But God knew that his grace would be sufficient for us if only we call on him and accept that his grace will see us through each day. We seem to be dealing with so many things at the moment with, with people, people who are lonely, people who are upset because someone is unwell in their family. People who are exhausted, confused. People who are missing family, missing grandchildren, missing hugs. People who feel that this lockdown has given them time to think about their future. Decisions to make about how things will change. Uncertainty about jobs. And God may not take all these problems away, but he does give us the power to deal with them and we just meet together this morning the knowledge that God does give us the power to deal with them and for our neighbours and friends and for those we're on the telephone to to those we're chatting to just to remind them that we can pray for them and that God does have the power to deal with every situation we're going to come now to a time of prayer so let's just pray shall we Jesus light of the world bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations Jesus Lord of life especially we pray for world leaders we pray for those in our government we pray for changes that are about to be made in the decisions about dealing with COVID. We pray for any changes made in social distancing, that they are made for the right reasons. We pray for those planning to get children back to school and for those who still plan to return to work. For the businesses that are not yet open, but hope to open over the next few weeks. For the businesses local to our church and local to our community. Jesus, Lord of life, hear this our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and especially nourish us all with your word. Not only your word, Lord, but your food that sustains us, food that sustains hunger, and we pray for those who are suffering from unemployment, those who don't have enough food, those who are too embarrassed to use food banks, adults who we know are going without food to feed their own children, children who wake up this morning knowing that they will be hungry at some point during the day and there will be nothing to feed them children who are abused and sad and that without school there is no one to watch what's happening in their homes the prayers are for adults in domestic abuse relationships we pray for those who are struggling to be at home with families jesus lord of life in your mercy hear us Jesus, our way, our truth and our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. And we pray especially for our church family. We pray for each other, separated by this virus. We thank you for online church, for online courses and the things we can still do together. 
and we pray for the things that keep us apart. Deepen us as a church in our appreciation of your truth and give us your grace as we go forward, being churches in our own homes and in our community. In your mercy, Lord, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave life for the sheep, surround us with your care and all those who need your care at this time. Let's have a time of silence and pray for those known to us who particularly need our prayers at this time. Lord, we pray for all those in hospital. We pray for those who are unwell. We pray for those who've had coronavirus and now face a long road to recovery. We pray for those who've lost people to this illness, for those that are grieving the loss of a loved one. And we pray for those who have other illnesses and ailments, for those with depression. Pray for all those that are known to us, Lord, that need your prayers. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection of the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believe in you. And we pray for each one of us this morning. Pray particularly for John and Aunt and their families. Amen. And let's just say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Forgive us this day, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just another little reading now, and this reading is from um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfil the lust of the flesh. And let's think about walking in the Spirit as we go forward into today. To walk means to place one foot in front of the other, to go forward one step at a time. If you stop doing this, you are no longer walking, you are standing still, or worse, going backwards. Walking also implies movement, progress and direction. And this is what it means for us to walk with God. It means moving forward in step with him, however small those steps may be at this time but moving in the way God wants us to move. That may be in spending more time in worship, spending more time being with God, as Aunt was talking about on Sunday. The problem is that sometimes we don't remember to walk with God. We get just waylaid or we stumble and get diverse and we get weary. And at times like this, it's so easy, isn't it? to give up but God says we are to walk by his spirit we know the story of Noah Noah was a just man perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God could this be said of us can we walk with God throughout this time let's just pray together that each one of us today can walk in God's spirit. And we pray as we go into this day for God's blessings on each of us. On all those that are not with us this morning, but those that are in our home groups, those that are in our church, our neighbours and our friends. 
We ask for God's spirit on them. Thank you, God, that your grace is sufficient for all of us and that we can walk today and every day in your spirit. We will stand, God, as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on him, our soul's reward, till the race is finished and the work is done. We will walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I hope you all have a lovely Tuesday. And I hope you find time during this day to, to feel God with you. And as you do things, to know that his grace is sufficient for each one of us. And to walk by God's faith. Knowing that we have faith in a God who will be with us throughout all this day and always. Amen.